Tonight we're watching the Indian Ocean for potential development in a few places. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for December 26. We're code blue right now for multiple systems. We've got what's left of 93S. Can you believe that is still active in the Southwest Indian Ocean? And the GFS thinks it could actually develop again. Also, Pabuk is also a remnant low. It briefly became a tropical storm on Christmas Eve and is now moving through uh, nearly uh, through southern Vietnam. Well, it's 157 days until Atlantic hurricane season. I'm sure no one's counting down, but uh, we have no systems active, which is good news. Uh, we do have quite a lot of just general weather going on there in the Western Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean. In the Eastern Pacific, uh, not too much going on here either. There's a bit of cloud cover as well, not far from the Gulf of Tehuantepec over the eastern part of Mexico. Uh, some more massive cloud as well to the southeast of Hawaii and obviously quite a bit of weather moving into Western California. In the Western Pacific, we've got what's left of Pabuk. We've still got a messy situation around the Philippines as well where we could possibly get more systems next week in the new year. Um, but right now, just a few thunderstorms around the southern Philippine islands. Pabuk should not regenerate. In the North Indian Ocean, we still have that 10% straggler that's holding on there. It's been swirling around the Bay of Bengal for a good while now. It was there in our last tropical weather bulletin six days ago and is still there, about to reach India finally and move inland, and it will be dead by tomorrow, we hope. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, we've got that ex-tropical depression 93S, which was a TD weeks ago, and a 70% chance of development for something that could form there near the Cocos Keeling Islands of Australia, uh, out over the eastern part of the South Indian Ocean. And in the South Atlantic, we have designated a 20% chance there off the coast of Uruguay. Although we don't expect it will develop, it could become a borderline subtropical cyclone, uh, but I expect it will not detach from its front. So here is that area of interest in the Indian Ocean. And in fact, if you look carefully, there are two. It is 98S on the left there, or near the center of the image. And just to its right, that little uh, swirling thing there, to its right, 99S. And they're on either side of the Cocos Keeling Islands right now, uh, the Australian Territory in the southeastern part of the Indian Ocean. First looking at Invest 98S, which is looking good, really getting itself organized by the looks of things. It just possibly needs to tighten up that rotation a little bit more. And we are giving that, of course, a 70% chance of development. And looking at satellite imagery, it is rather convincing. The best chance for this system will be in the next two or three days uh, before it starts to either uh, lose to the other system to its east or both of them will just start to succumb to the conditions. Now this is what's left of Pabuk off the coast of southern Vietnam. As you can see, very little now in the way of convection, just tiny monsoonal pattern clouds there just about to reach the coast of Vietnam, so not much more of a rainmaker down there. And this is the system in the Bay of Bengal, that one we've been watching forever. There it is now, it is actually making landfall in India, very close to Chennai at this time. Very, very little convection actually has a decent circulation by the looks of things but convection obviously not there at all a little bit of heavy rainstorms at times possibly in those areas but quite sporadic uh, and this is some radar imagery as well not the best but you can just about see uh, where the center of that system is now moving ashore uh, a little bit of curving on that western side uh, denoting the western side of the center here's the other one 99s that's the one that's east of the Cocos Keeling Islands. That little island on the right-hand side there, that's Christmas Island, aptly named. And you can see that system there, well to the southwest of there. Um, it is starting to really tighten up by the looks of things on that imagery, that shrimp look. Although there is some heavy wind shear by the looks of things on its eastern side of where that little area is blowing up. Where that's even where the center is or not, I'm not sure at this point without seeing visibles. Uh, but again could be something to watch some model scenarios do have that system prevailing over 98s 
in the end and actually becoming a substantial tropical cyclone so keep watching now here's the Atlantic you can see a lot of uh, uh, systems or little areas of thunderstorms moving up from the Central American region and now into the eastern Pacific where it all begins down there south of Mexico uh, really throwing up a few storms towards uh, the southeast in the United States and of course we have a slight risk of severe weather tomorrow in Texas and Louisiana. Here's the western Pacific you can see uh, those uh, storms down there near Mindanao on either side and in southern Palawan uh, delivering some significant rainfall there at the moment and here's a, a grander view of the North Indian Ocean just showing how dismal that system is looking that's making landfall in India and here's some enhanced infrared looking at the Arabian Sea and it is bone dry as we look at that imagery there that whole region is completely off limits some storms blowing up over Madagascar today, uh, some general thunderstorms uh, but obviously a wet day there on the western coast and this is looking towards the Australian region, um, the tropics bustling there towards the left hand side, that's where those two invests are. And in the South Pacific a very long front there stretching from the islands of Fiji and the like down towards New Zealand uh, a big uh, extra tropical low near northern New Zealand there and this is the South Atlantic system just off Uruguay you can see two competing centers there uh, getting quite deep as well now down into the 990s with estimated winds near 45 miles per hour so it's certainly got the winds it may well have the convection will it ever lose that front probably not Sea surface temperatures obviously continue to decline across the northern hemisphere and will continue to do so probably until around February. Most of the Gulf of Mexico is now below 25 degrees, Caribbean still holding onto those warmer waters. Western Pacific, the Philippines still looking decent and out towards east over the uh, Micronesian Islands and Palau. Temperatures up to 30 degrees in one or two spots there. South China Sea definitely off the boil as well. Southwest Indian Ocean, those temperatures still continuing to warm off the coast of Madagascar overall, but temperatures uh, around 30 degrees Celsius. Off to the east near Mauritius, around 27 degrees. Off Australia, it's extremely warm along almost all of the north coast there from the Gulf of Carpentaria right round to the 80 mile beach region of Western Australia. Temperatures up and possibly above 32 degrees in a few spots, the cold sea also warming up. These are the anomalies, those blue areas below average and the orange and red zones are temperatures above average. Western Australia, massive anomaly there right now, that's probably the most topical area um, in terms of systems that we're looking out for. But looking at the Central Pacific, you can clearly see that little dagger there in the equator region of cooler temperatures denoting that we are a little bit of a low end on the PDO and possibly La Nina. Oceanic heat content still looking pretty good in many parts of the Western Pacific and even a little area left in the Eastern Pacific actually. We don't usually see that at this point. Uh, but down in the deep tropics still a few spots of very high oceanic heat content and a little bit to the west of Guam. In the South Pacific, it's starting to rev up there as well. Of course, they reached their peak around February time. Uh, the Coral Sea is starting to get some more energy there, especially further east towards Vanuatu. The Solon Islands got plenty of it. Uh, obviously, a decent breeding ground there quite often produces the early stages of storms. So what does the GFS model think of these two systems? In fact, both of them do coexist for a little while. 98S on the left, 99 on the right. It is actually 98S that just about wins out between those two systems, but it's a weak interaction. 98S briefly become a tropical storm there in the next uh, 24 hours, actually. 99 almost getting there. Looks like it doesn't quite make it. Uh, we haven't even marked it, to be fair, so that is actually quite impressive. Uh, here's that South Atlantic system. You can see it gaining traction there. Does it lose that front? Well, it may actually get there, but by the time it does, it may have lost most of that strength and unclassifiable, if that is a word. Uh, so it's something to keep watching. I think 20% is fair. A 1 in 5 chance that this could become something, but a 4 in 5 chance that it will not. 
that's all we've got in the short range let's take a look at the precipitation charts and for tonight we've chosen the philippine region because they are getting a lot of general precipitation it's not to do with pabuk but there is some extra rainfall there for central eastern coast of vietnam as well uh, so in large parts of the philippines there especially off the east there monsoonal showers possibly stuff that becomes that tries to become a tropical cyclone or at least a disturbance producing a lot of rain local amounts possibly up to 400 millimeters or higher in parts of northeastern Luzon and for southern Samar and also for the northern part of Mindanao. Down towards the east coast a little bit lower and for Vietnam possibly 250 millimeters in the next seven days. In the longer range, why on earth are we looking at the Eastern Pacific? Well, I can tell you why. The GFS develops a clear-cut tropical storm near the end of the 10-day period in the first week of January. Now, look carefully at that right on day 10. It forms at about 139 degrees west on that model run. So if it did form, it would get an East Pacific name, and that would be remarkable. I don't think that's ever happened. Uh, or maybe it might get a Central Pacific name. If that ever happens at all, it's on day 10. Also in a similar range, eventually we start to see a system develop off the northern tip of Madagascar and that might actually still be the one that we've been tracking since around the 12th of December uh, in the Australian region that was 93S off the west coast of the western Australian coast. Um, finally becoming a tropical storm there. It's been redesignated 90S, so it's got a new designation now, but it is the same system. There it is, um, just about reaching the northern tip of Madagascar as a tropical storm. Now, in the South Pacific, this is way out towards the east. In the middle of the picture, there are those little islands. That's French Polynesia, and we're seeing a little tropical storm developing there for a while. And it does continue actually southeastwards, and it blows up in size a lot during the period, the long range period, which we won't be showing you uh, continue southeastwards away from land and eventually turns post-tropical so exciting times potentially in January scan the barcode and that will take you through to our merch store we have our full season individual animations on request at any time as well as our other products too there's an old video of me and of course uh, still those Hone shirts as well although a different variation all you got was a lousy t-shirt Poor Hone. Well then, looking at the Western Pacific in the Silly Range, now this is really remarkable actually. There's a powerful typhoon that develops there, stalling almost in the South China Sea, and another typhoon off in the Philippine Sea getting drawn up by a big front there off towards the northeast. Twin typhoons in January! Could that be possible? That would be in just about into the second week of January there uh, with that other system near Palawan to the west becoming a major and then starting to weaken and slowly moving westwards. That is remarkable. As for the Madagascar system, continuing westwards, actually it develops there, it does a bit of a stalling, very, in fact that does look like another impact from a yacht there, uh, which would be dreadful after Cheeto. It is almost the same track as Cheeto even, when you look at that, the late part of Cheeto, and it develops into a substantial cyclone too, at least a category 2 on that, in the very long range. Keep a big weary eye on that one. That is actually probably a major cyclone landfall there in Mozambique. Well, on this day, it was 1966, and regrettably, we don't have any imagery. But Typhoon Pamela was a high-end Category 2, about to sweep through the Philippines, making landfall, I think, in southern Samar, if I recall correctly, and moving through the Visayas region. We also had Cyclone Clara Elisa, a Category 1 at this point. Daphne, which weakened after making landfall in Madagascar, moving southeasterly to a depression. And 9S, which had formed to the east, very close to the Cocos Keeling Islands as well and that also got a name I can't remember which name it got uh, but eventually it did but at this point it was just 9S well, back to today, of course, we're very close to the end of the year. We've finally calibrated all of our numbers and our full analysis for the season. 85 storms so far. The average is 92, so it's pretty average. Atlantic next name, if we get one, is Tony. East Pacific, Miriam. Central Pacific, Iona. Won't happen. Western Pacific, I actually have lost the list because we've reached the end there with Pabuk, but trust me, there are more names on the way. I can't believe I've forgotten that naming list now. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name is Shaq. 
happy. Well, that's something you can talk about in the comments anyway. In the Australian region, the next name is Sean, in the Southwest Indian Ocean, the Kaledi, and in the South Pacific, it is Pitta. Hopefully, we'll have more tropical weather bulletins. We're trying to keep a schedule. Of course, it's difficult at this time of year, but we'll see you again soon. Become an ultimate fan today.